everybody. Welcome to the Lord of the Rings Online. This is Narlo here. Say hello to everyone. Narlo, good boy. Shall see when last we left off, we were still dressed in all of our holiday finery over here. However, that does not really befit a burglar because that sets us out to be less of a burglar and more of a mark. So why don't we step right over here behind this bush away from where the sheriff is standing and voila through the magic of editing we are back into our old costume which also comes from the Yule Festival oddly enough that should be over if it's supposed to have ended today I have not actually um, tried to go over there or visited any of the the main stables to see if the see if the uh, festival horses are gone but <sighs> Turbine's usually pretty good at ending their festivals on time, if not a little bit early, so I would imagine it's being over. I hope everyone had a good time and was able to uh, get everything that you wanted. That's what I was doing this morning at uh, 1 or 2 o'clock, was just, as the hobbits say, filling in the corners, getting those last-minute items that I wanted and that sort of thing. All right. Well, we've got this quest here, Burglar. The truest course is awareness, and we're supposed to talk to Sterling Proudfoot. So we're going to go ahead and run over here and talk to Sterling. That's what we are doing outside the gates of Buckland here. Just outside the Shire proper. There's the Brandywine Bridge. Up there is one of those lazy rangers. And as you see, they are still suffering the onslaught of the Black Rider assault. All the broken wagons and fence posts and everything from when the riders came tearing through Buckland looking for Frodo. Have to remember that it's it's hard to it's hard to uh, keep track and keep in your mind sometimes especially with these uh, seasonal events go that go on that different parts of the world are actually occurring at different times. Um, for instance right here in the in the Buckland area what is it? Over in the Shire, it's like the 23rd of September. Over here, it would be like the 26th or 27th of September. Perpetually. It's the basically the morning after the attack on Crick Hollow. Um, after the four hobbits have slipped away through underneath the, the hedge gate into the old forest. And then the Black Riders have attacked uh, Crick Hollow the, the, that evening that very night and uh, scared the heck out of old fatty boulder. So we are gonna ride on out here see if we can't find Sterling Proudfoot. He's supposed to be somewhere near Brandy Hall. Brandy Hall of course being the gigantic hobbit hole here that takes up the entire uh, Brandy Hill. All the various rooms and windows and various doorways that belong to it peeking out of the side of the hill. I guess we will try and circle around until we see a ring on our little mini-map up there. That will probably be the first indication that we are getting close. And there we go. We look like we are getting close. He looks like he is... must be behind the hedge up there. So let's ride on up toward the front doors. Yep, there's old Ceridoc Brandybuck, the master of Brandy Hall. And it looks like our friend Sterling might be right down here behind all the flower beds. Yep, there he is. Let's dismount and let's talk to Mr. Proudfoot here and see what he has to say about the burglar profession. Burglar, the truest course is awareness. A lovely day, isn't it? It's a pleasure to meet you, Narlo. Not many burglars reach our level of skill, you know. If you ask me, that's a good thing. Less competition for the best treasure. Hello there. Might I speak with you a moment? All right, a lesson from Bilbo Baggins. Don't take this the wrong way, my friend, but I can't help but notice that you're not exactly outfitted with the type of equipment that befits your reputation as a skilled burglar. I mean, no offense, of course. In fact, I'd be willing to help fashion you a few articles that will do a better job of it. 
It won't be easy, but then again, has, when has anything worthwhile ever been easy? Am I right? Of course I'm right. Just let me know when you're ready to begin, and I'll tell you what you're going to need if I'm going to make you some equipment worthy of a first-class burglar. So we are supposed to complete articles of cunning and complete instruments of night. Our rewards will be some coin and an additional class trait point. Alright, let's see if this continues. Articles of cunning. Could I take a moment of your time? Quest level 50. Both of these are quest level 50s. Seems like so so far away, but I keep forgetting I'm level 46 now. Wow, I put on like four four levels during that whole during that whole experience with uh, with the uh, Winterfest there, because we were even with this one, correct? And it was level 42. And we've already it's already turned light blue on us. We put on four levels. I tell you that about those festivals, they really do slap the experience on you. I remember back whenever they first started and you didn't get any. Um, you did the festival stuff for the rewards and just for the fun of doing it. But gotta say they have a heck of a lot more people in Frost Bluff now that you get uh, now that you can put on a, a level of experience every couple of days. Speaking of which, as y'all see, I did hit tier three of the more the merrier and I got the the festive frame, but I think we will go back down to just my six year frame. Or do I want to go with a VIP frame? We'll go with a six year frame. There we go. Alright, Articles of Cunning. Narlo, you're in need of some equipment that says, Look at me, I'm a burglar. I thought that was exactly what we didn't want people looking at us. <laughs> Come to think of it, that might be a little counterproductive in our line of work. Very good, I'm glad you figured that out on your own. No matter, you deserve some nice equipment and I'm going to make you some. You'll have to fetch the components I need, but that should be no problem for skilled burglars such as yourself, right? The lineage of an item holds great power, so keep that in mind as I set before you a series of difficult tasks. In the Misty Mountains, snarling snow beasts roam. Gather some of their fur. I've heard they can be found near the source of the river Loudwater, but I don't know if that's true. Also, there is a great white bear which dwells in the lands of the giants of the Misty Mountains. Bring me his fur as well. When you've gathered these things, return to me for more instruction. Alright, so we've got to collect 12 snow beast furs and one drift claw hide. And we'll get an earring of cunning or a bracelet of cunning. Boy, that would be a pretty good upgrade in either way. Alright. So that's our Articles of Cunning. Let's see what the Implements of Night involve. Good day. Might I have a word with you? If you're at all like me, Narlo, you'll be wanting a weapon that's just right for those who've chosen to follow that noblest of professions by becoming burglars. And not just any burglar, but a skilled one. Not just any weapon will do, and I can make just such a one for you. It won't be easy, though. I'll be needing a number of things from hard-to-reach places. What am I saying? You're a fine burglar. I'm sure you'll manage. The first thing I'll need are fangs from the brimstone leeches of eastern Angmar and the claw of the warg Narglop, who can also be far found in Angmar, though to the west near Tor Gavlin. So we've got to collect Narglop split claw and five brimstone leech fangs. And for that we get the Mace of the Night, which looks pretty darn decent. Or the Dagger of the Night, which also looks pretty decent. Probably not quite as good as the Mace, but there you go. Only problem with this, I can tell that these are, I remember doing the same kind of thing on my uh, Guardian way back in the years past, where you had to collect these items and all that. You'll notice they're 50th level items. And it's cool as far as that goes and all, but the weapon, yeah, it's a decent weapon, but right about the time that we're hitting level 50, we should also be going into Moria and starting uh, the whole Moria quest series and our quest for our legendary item which will pretty much be the item we keep from then on out the various legendaries whether it's third age or second age or those rare rare first agers so so I don't know how much implements in the night are really going to help us that much, how long they'll be useful for, but we will see what we can do with that. Alright, 
So we are going to mount up. We've got Book 5, Chapter 2 here, Troublesome Goblins. And it's a good thing we have the Snow Beast Furs that are supposedly in the Misty Mountains because Gersmat is in that uh, goblin camp in Pinneth Finue. Finue. So it's off to the Misty Mountains for us to see if we can't defeat Gersmat now that we've added about four levels onto our abilities. And we will see you when we arrive over there in the Misty Mountains. So we'll catch you after the break here. All right, folks, we have made it here into the Misty Mountains, as you can tell by the terrain around us here. We are currently taking a brief rest right here at one of the campsite fires. I'll pull it up. I'm sure most of the rangers, any of the hunters in the group are well familiar with it. We're right here, had just passed through uh, the, the White Clef Paths over here. Um, Caldwell Pool is right down here, and then we are fixing to kind of hang the right-hand wall and go into the Pinath Fenui. So you see just a short distance over here to the right. All right, we haven't had too bad of trouble getting here. We had to fight one lurker and one ward, but they were both light blue to us. And in addition, um, I've seen a number of the snow beasts and hovering over them. I got the the message that they were for the quest. As you see, the the uh, skirmishers and all are light blue now. I think, wanting to say, whenever we were up here last time, they were what, white? Because they were pretty much clear on the same level with us. See, everything in this part of the Misties, anyway, is turning, is turning uh, light blue. So we're going to see if we can't cross Caldwell Pool without drawing too much attention to ourselves. Get up here, and then what we will do is uh, hop down, stealth up, and continue on up the mountain trail. As y'all remember, um, Gersmat is found in the camp at the very, very top of this trail. Once you get all the way up top to the uh, the Goblin Fortress up there, so we're just going to continue making our way on up, and when we get there, I will rejoin you. All right, there's Gersmat over there. There's that one wandering skirmisher that we have to worry about. I think we will go ahead and take him out first whenever he wanders back around us. So I don't want him coming and joining in on the fight. found a missing page from the knee breakers manual fantastic y'all remember that was the the burglar books that we went and talked to um, went and talked to Bilbo about all right we've got hide in plain sight ready we've got hobbit silence ready so we can get away from them if need be but first before we start we are gonna load up in a few things we're gonna use our tome of defense I figured I've been getting all this crap and the Hobbit gifts every day, might as well use them. So we are going to get the Tomes of Defense, will give us minus 10 incoming damage to everything. We are going to use the Scrolls of Max Morale and Power, which are going to last an hour and a half. We are going to use the plus 5% attack damage, which will be an hour and a half. And we're going to use the Dalman's Crams, which will be 5 minutes of of uh, regeneration and extra hit points and on top of that I've also got potions of refined Thelus extract and the universal morale potions down here let's go ahead and eat our food alright we have enjoyed a meal we've got all our buffs up let's go in and see if we can get around behind Gersmat 
see if we can't have a little better go at him this time. Reveal weakness. Let's see if we can distract him. We did. Now let's see if we can get in the first blow. And we can. Excellent. Alright, I'm going to see if I can riddle that guy. And I can. Good. So now we've only got the one guy attacking us again. Just Gur's map. Let's see if we can stun him. Excellent. Fantastic. Oh, this fight's going very well this time. It's amazing what... Amazing what... Uh, outpowering your foe this significantly can do for you, isn't it? Especially with all the buffs we've got on us. There we go. Superb. Excellent. I'm going to peek in this wooden chest right here right quick just because, well, you know, I am a burglar. So let's see what we got here. Hopefully Gersmat won't pop in behind us. Loot all. Very good. Now let's get out of the way before he pops back in. Excellent. Good, good, good. All right. Now, ordinarily, I would map back out of here, but uh, my return to Rivendell still got 40 minutes before the cooldown wears off, so I am just going to stealth back up, head back down the hill, and see if we can get back to Gloin's camp, which was right there in the, uh, right back there at the entrance to the Misty Mountains area. So we will meet you whenever we get closer to seeing Mr. Gloin. We'll see you at that point. And we are closing back in on Gloin's camp here. Pretty uneventful ride back, I have to say. I had uh, one of the snow beasts throw a few uh, throw a few rocks at me, and had one or two of the lynxes growl at me as we went by. But other than that, nothing much to talk about. So we are going to dismount, and we will talk to Mr. Gloin here and see if we can finish up Book Five, Chapter Two. The, what, troublesome goblins, yep. Hello, Gloin, how are you doing? Troublesome goblins. No, Dodling! What? Dourhand dwarves with the goblins? Oh, yes, it's all coming together now. While you were away, one of my scouts reported something interesting. You see, the task given to me by King Dane was to track down the Dourhand's last refuge. The scout seems to have found it as there were a large number of dower hands all around an old dwarf fortress named Gabilzalan. Gabilazan. Gabilazan. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a cord. Gabilazan. But that wasn't all that he found. As the scout watched from a high ridge, two figures rode up to the fortress. One was a dwarf, the other a cloaked figure. At first, he didn't know what he was seeing, but when all the dower hands stopped what they were doing and cheered, he knew the dwarf could only be one person. Scorgrim. Now that, with what you've told me, the other figure with him must have been the Ringwraith. It would seem our two tasks are but one friend. So choose one of these items. We can get Threk Fotar, which actually is a pretty decent set of shoes. Congrim, which is definitely a decent weapon. We might go with that. Or the Doom of Gerzat. Hmm. 26 agility... 8 Might, Agility, and Fate. Agility, Morale, Parry. But that one's also got higher DPS, too. I think we're going to go with Congrom. Greetings, Traveler. All Will right. you stay a moment? Book 5, Chapter 3. The High Fortress. If we can but enter this fortress, we will end two problems with one fell stroke. By ending the threat of this rider, we can ensure Rivendell's safety, and by putting an end to Scorgrim, we will crush the Dower Hands. However, it won't be easy, as the scout reported that the two entered the inner keep of the fortress. That keep is nearly impregnable. 
This is what you must do, Narlo. Every dwarf fortress has a secret entrance, and although I do not know the secret of Gabilazan, I do know how to learn it. When the cornerstone for Gabilazan was laid down, a copy of the fortress's plans would have been stored within. Around that cornerstone the fortress is built, and can now only be accessed by entering Gabilazan's vault. Once we have the plans, we will be able to learn the fortress's secret entrance. Gabilazan can be found in the more westerly of the two passes that gate entrance to Eobar. The easternmost pass, Rakas Bazar, is not guarded by dwarves and may give you a roundabout means of approaching the keep. Alright, so now we know we need to get into Gabilazar, find its secret vault, and find the secret entrance to get into it. And as Samwise Gamgee once said, I think it was in The Lord of the Rings, in Fellowship of the Ring, when they were talking about the, uh, they were trying to go over the Pass of Caradras, and Gimli was telling them the name Zirak Ziggle and all the other names of the three mountain peaks. And as Samwise said then, Dwarven language is something of a jawbreaker. And as you see there, it truly, truly is. So that's where we're going to leave off. We will start Book 5, Chapter 3 next time. We will also see if we can kill some of the snow beasts and gather their furs at that point as well. So we will see you next time, and thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.